Welcome to Chillopedia. This is Maxim. Today we continue working on Piatti cello method. We will learn how to play D major scale three octaves and we'll study very cheerful and exciting etude by Sebastian Lee. D major scale is one of the first scales we learn at the beginning of our cello studies but it's usually one or two octaves. And now it's time to extend our knowledge of the fingerboard by adding an extra octave. Let's try to play it together in slow tempo quarter note 60. I assume that you already learned how to play two octaves D major scale. I will work with you on the shifts to the higher positions. One of the first things we have to master is how to go beyond the fourth position. The main difference there is not where the notes are, but rather more unusual position of the left hand. Playing in the first four positions, you will have to just uh, keep the thumb touching the neck of the cello. And after that, you will have to figure out when to move the thumb so it can join other fingers on the fingerboard. Let's start playing with E in the fourth position and we will try to move the thumb up when you play F sharp. This way you prepare your thumb in advance. It's important to do it many times so it will become your habit. If you have to think about thumb, then chances are that your shift will not go smooth and your intonation of G with the first finger will not be perfect. Make the shift as many times as you can and then we will continue. So now you got used to move the thumb in a higher position and let's try to take care about one more thing. When you make this shift, try also to prepare the second finger. If you just make a shift and your second finger is somewhere above the fingerboard in no particular position, then the intonation of A will be fairly random. At least you will have to make an extra effort to get that note. But if when you make a shift, you are making a shift and also taking care of the distance between G and A, the whole step, by the way, then your left hand will work in much more efficient way and most likely you will play with higher precision.
The same happens when you make the next shift. The distance between B and C sharp is the whole step. Try to take care of that right away. You make a shift from A and you're also preparing the next note. So you're thinking two steps ahead. This rule works really well for every shift. This way, when you make a shift, you ideally need to think not only the very first note you're about to play, but all the notes in the following position. And if there is a way to prepare fingers while making this shift, you will be way more precise with execution of all the notes in the position. It's very tempting to use harmonics when you play most of the scales. For instance, you could easily use A harmonic in this scale. But I would recommend you only to use harmonics to check if the notes, say A, is in tune. But when you play the scale through, then you better off not using harmonics. Simply because you need to master all those shifts using the normal notes. Because in the future you might need to work on vibrato when you make those shifts. And also the sound quality is way more consistent if you are not using harmonics. And if piece of music you are playing will benefit from using harmonics, of course you can do it. Once you feel confident playing this scale one note per bow, you can of course try to play it much faster. Very often three octave scales are played three notes per bow. Now I'll play for you in the tempo three notes 60, three times faster than I played before. major arpeggio three octaves. The fingering you see here on the top is most frequently used. It might not seem to be ideal at first because you have to make shifts on lower strings, but making shifts right away will spare you from making huge shifts on the A string at the top of this arpeggio. Let's do it together, tempo quarter note 60. Some of the shifts here might seem to be quite difficult. You can use the same approach. Just work on those shifts playing just two notes. One note before the shift and the shift itself. And always don't hesitate to play it with glissando. So you can hear the one note go into another. You can always use very smooth and slow slide in the left hand. The good example is a shift from D to F sharp on the G string. I 
I tried to make this shift slower and also I made sure that my thumb is ready before I make this shift. Train yourself to anticipate that you will have to use your thumb like this and that you'll have to move it up right before you're making a shift, not during the shift. And that will make it much easier for you to execute whichever shift you need to make. And like a scale, you can also play this arpeggio three notes per ball. The etude number 11 by Sebastian Lee. Let's play it in a slower tempo, quarter note 60. Check your bow hold. Make sure that you are not squeezing the bow with your fingers. Make sure that your left hand is relaxed. You breathe. And I think you are ready to play. There are few shifts you'll have to make in this etude. Those are not most likely the difficult shifts for you to make. However, it's very good idea to be as prepared to make them as possible. Let me give you two examples. In the third line, you will have to make the shift to the second finger to play A. In this case, you have a quarter note rest right before that. That means you will make the shift while counting through this quarter note. Try to make this shift right away when you count through the quarter note rest. And you will be able to make it in much more precise and relaxed way. However, sometimes you don't have that much time to make this shift and you will have to make it much faster. If there is bow change, try to make this shift right when you are changing the bow. This way you will be able to hide this shift. For example, the line number four, the end of the second measure. Here, right after G, in the third position, you have to get back to the first position. And 
no extra time is given. Let me show you how you could do it. I will do it one more time. Pay attention. I made this shift right when I was changing up bow to the down bow. As always, you might want to just play one or two notes before the shift and make this shift. And this way you will practice just few notes and you can repeat it many times without spending too much time and just paying attention to those few notes. It is very important to play the notes before the shift in tune. Otherwise, every time you will be working on somewhat different shift. Very important part of the bow technique to work on in this etude is going over the string. For example, the measure 3. Let's try to do it in very slow tempo. When you have to skip a string, it's virtually impossible to connect the notes. So that's perfectly fine to shorten each note and use that time to move the bow across the string. Needless to say that each string requires different angle. So that will be perfect spot for you to work on positioning the bow properly, considering each string you have to use. A string, D, and then G, and then the angle for C string. And now let's play this measure as written. You might hear some unwanted noise in between of those notes. Try not to avoid it by just lifting the bow. Even though it might seem to be a very exciting technique to use, it will not be very efficient in most of those cases. Just a quick stop and then moving the bow from string to string at the same time changing the bow angle will help. And of course, you have to study it from slower tempo to faster. When I play this etude in a slower tempo, I used very little vibrato to make sure that we pay all attention to technique rather to the melody. However, when you are ready to play it in a faster tempo, feel free to add vibrato, to phrase more and to make it to sound as if this is the concert piece. I will play it for you in tempo quarter note 104.
if you enjoyed working on this etude and would like to play it together with the second teacher's part, please check out the link in the description and become Patreon supporter of Cellopedia. You will have many etudes to play together with me. As always, thank you for watching and see you soon for more lessons.